It all begins with a simple question, one that was never meant to be answered. Most people will merely ask the question without expecting any kind of response. Maybe that's for the best. For the others, the ones who As we watch the days go by and time dwindles down from Nintendo Wii Online service, many of us go back and play these online games when we can before they all get chopped off by the legs and shut down. While the more popular games for Nintendo, such as Super Smash Bros. and Mario Kart, have games coming for the Wii U, there are some games that aren't guaranteed to have them for the newest Nintendo console, and Conduit being one of them. Many fans ponder this and wonder will another Conduit game come out. Some say nay, some say yay. But to even have a chance of knowing the answer, we need to go back and look at the game that started it all, the Conduit. So, let's begin. Others end up like me. My name is Michael Ford. I'm probably the only one left who knows the truth. I know because I was there. Back in 2008, the developers High Voltage Software had announced the production of the first kind of game on April 17th. It was focused towards the hardcore audience for the Wii, and was designed to have an elogious experience with FPS games on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. And even though the Wii had some limitations of the hardware, even still, they made the game, and they pretty much achieved that goal. Although some may disagree, it did have similar experiences to the Xbox 360 and PS3 games although lacking in some areas of the other consoles such as voice chat and a party system. It launched in North America on June 23rd, 2009, July 10th in Europe, and July 16th for Australia. From the multiplayer side of things, it was awesome for the first few months of the game. Many people enjoyed the experience of Conduit and there are many things to learn about the game. The multiplayer is similar to Halo in plenty of ways, and instead of using weapons that you can pick for a custom class, you instead have weapon sets. Pretty much five weapons for you to play around with. One is your primary, one is your secondary, and the other three weapons are in the middle, blue team, and red team spawn. An example of this was the near and far weapon set. In this weapon set, you had the Spaz Slope Shotgun and the Scar Assault Rifle as your primary and secondary weapon respectively, the Deanimizer Mark IV, the Strike Rifle, and the TPC Launcher. The weapon sets are chosen at random, but everyone picked one thing that they liked from the sets that were available, and it was selected by chance. The same was true for other things, such as game modes and maps. And like I said, for the first few months, things were balanced fairly well, and people enjoyed the game. However, there is a saying that all good things must come to an end, and while this isn't really true on a grand level, this is most definitely true for Kondo 1, as glitches and bugs started to pop up all over the place. The most detrimental of these glitches was the weapon mix glitch. With this glitch, a user can mix two non chargeable weapons or charge with weapons together to get a mixed weapon. For example, you can mix the USB 45 and SCAR together, and with a series of button presses near an ammo crate, you either get a semi-automatic SCAR that was normal like 3 round burst weapon, or you could get a USB 45 that could fire 3 rounds at a time with a built in scope. Another example would be combining a very useless hive cannon with a small rocket launcher. You could either get a hive cannon that was now completely useless, or a small that was very useful and overpowered. And when the small was combined with any weapon that could fire multiple shots in a short period of time, the small would be an unstoppable wrecking machine. You have taken the lead. And this will lead to a few problems that will persist for the rest of the game's life cycle. For one, due to the lobby system, most people just picked one thing out of the three choices that were available more than half the time. Those were the map Streets, a small CQB map that was very hectic and fast paced, the game mode Marathon, which is a constant 20 minute game mode with unlimited kills and deaths, and the key element of it all, an explosive weapon set, where most weapons are explosive in some way, including the small and high cannon. 
While it surely wasn't like this every single game, you'd be sure that if the small wasn't there, it was likely someone to glitch with it. Another glitch that popped up was the out of the map glitches. In several maps, a user could crouch walk over a spot of the map and fall out of it. Then that user could do a series of button presses that float around the map and get into areas where that user could see you and shoot you. But you couldn't shoot them or see them. It was a very cheap tactic indeed and heavily abused a lot. One of the bad things is that there was grenades banned, and lots of it. Most people found out that going to refill your ammo not only did that, but it would give you 6 grenades every time. And there was no limit to the amount that you could get every time you had to go get 6 more exploding death balls. Plus, it was very obvious that you were going to spam them, because you almost never ran out of ammo. Ever. There was so much ammo for a gun that it would make the army shake in their boots. However, you almost always ran out of grenades, at least if you spam like a noob. Also part way to the game's life cycle, hackers hacked the game, so god mode and all the like was common. And there was no way to counter this or for the game to be patched by the devs. At all. As you can tell, this needed to be fixed by the next game. And with the hardcore crowd growing more displeased with the growing problems of Kind of One, and more and more people doing glitches to do for fun, and just to troll people, meant that there were more and more hype for the next game. Conduit 2. By June 2009, Conduit 2 was being developed as a Conduit 1 shift, and by March 29, 2010, the game was announced. HBS X fans looked they wanted the CNC 2, and some of the things that was asked of them was split screen, female characters, a dedicated sniper rifle, and much more. Another key improvement is that the game will support patching. The developers would now be able to update the game in case of bugs or gameplay balancing that needed to be done. This looking back was an awesome thing, and still is, because without that, C2 wouldn't even be half the game it is now. Also, the game got delayed about 2-3 times during its development. This made several fans like me upset, however looking back it probably should have had another delay, or at least longer delays than what it had before, just to fix other issues with the game. When the game launched, it was a shock to some people. The game was very different and some fans displayed it. For a lot of the hardcore Conduit 1 fans, the game was too different, and most of them went back to Conduit 1 or played other games instead. However, there were some that loved C2 and stuck with it till the end. Also, it seems like all the best players who played TCON left and gone, but many others took their place. You can probably think of some others that were really good at the time. One of the things that was different was an added perk system for Conduit 2. Like most recent first person shooter games of the 21st century, perks are little abilities that added to your character to enhance it in a certain special way made its way into C2. While some felt this was a great addition to Conduit, some also felt the perks held too much of an importance in multiplayer, meaning that to go without them was too much of a disadvantage for people. Another thing that original fans didn't like was the metagame differences. Compared to TCON, Conduit 2 had some major differences in jumping, health, and other areas. Overall though, it was mostly just a different game from the original. However though, like Conduit 1, Conduit 2 had some problems. First thing, and probably the most problematic for most people, especially hardcore players like myself, the small. The small rocket launcher was a problem for a few reasons such that it was too strong and too easy to use. All you really had to do was aim somewhat in the direction, and fire off a shot and you would probably get the kill. And when paired with the range increasing perks of the Rockets of Death, made it even worse. Another tactic that was pretty cheap was using the perk reverse damage. This perk allowed you to heal your teammates with radiation grenades, but also yourself at a very fast rate. It is considered too strong to counter. If someone was in the area of these grenades, it would literally be impossible to kill them without a one hit kill weapon, or at least a Carbonizer Mark 16. Also like the original Conduit, this game had some out of the map glitches. While it could be dealt with now with the use of the phase rifle, a sniper that can see and shoot through walls, it could still be a problem as people could equip the perk to deny the ability of the phase rifle and still be able to glitch to their heart's content. 
It was mainly game balancing and some glitches that was the problem for players of Conduit 2. However though, as I kept mentioning, most of the players for TCON was not happy about how the second game was in terms of gameplay mechanics. So this brings up an interesting question in regards to a possible third Conduit game. How should the game function? Should it go back to its roots and be like TCON? Or should it be a game like C2? All in all, it's an ongoing debate, as each side of the argument say different things that are actually both equally valid. One way you might look at this is to figure out an answer for both games' popularity. Unfortunately for both games, there is no way to know an accurate player count, as both games do not have ways to show off the numbers of players at any given time during the day. Although, the sales numbers could work to show this instead. According to VG Charts, a website that tracks the sales numbers of games, Conduit 2 sold 0.11 million, while the first Conduit sold 0.55 million. That's roughly for C2, 110,000 copies compared to 550,000 copies of TCON. That's about 80% less than the original game, which might even have you wondering why Conduit 2 is even existing right now with numbers that low. However, there is something to be said about these numbers, and that is advertisements. During when Conduit 2 is about to be released, and even midway to release, the game had no TV ads, no GameStop ads, and only a few internet ads and word of mouth. Which kind of one had all of that and much more in the form of TV ads too. It's no wonder why the game sold about 80% less than the first one. This still makes it unclear though about which way the third game should go. Because if Conduit 2 is a better game than the original, it is certainly shrouded behind low sales which wouldn't be indicative of a better game. But even if we do find an answer to this debate, a better question to ask, will a third game even be happening at all? That's the question I think we should all be asking ourselves. So let's look at it. Will there be a kind of three at all? There are several things to look at this. For one, on September 7, 2012, an employee at High Voltage Software known as HVS Bob put out a quick Q&A thread for GameFAQs, letting us know how the company was doing, some upgrades they made, and most importantly, an announcement for Conduit News by the end of the year. Here's the quote by HVS Bob himself. And we haven't forgotten about Conduit over here either. I would expect some Conduit related news before the year is out. However though, some would say otherwise of this, as I said before, this is made September 7, 2012. It's now April 19, 2014, as of this video's release date. So where's the news? I'm personally not so sure what's with the long holdup, but one can hope that it's still coming. However, there are some other clues that we can use to see if this is coming at all. For one, the Conduit HD port for Android devices is one thing that we can use to see that the team still cares about the series. Otherwise, there may not have been a port at all. Also, if the game sells well enough, who knows? Maybe they might do another console game. We don't know. One thing is for certain though, with HVS being a registered developer for Wii U and many other platforms, and it having only done about one game for the Wii U thus far, it might be soon that they have another special Wii U game coming. And speaking of special games, it could be possible for them to do a port to the Wii U for the eShop instead of a full retail game. Having your games for eShop or just online in general instead of putting them on shelves saves money, mostly due to the fact that you can cut out the middleman like Target, Walmart, or GameStop. It also reduces costs by having no physical box in such items. This will make it more practical for each of us to put out a new condo game and still be able to keep the series going. However, this is pure speculation, as no official word from High Voltage said that they were, or could, going to do this. But it's certainly still as possible as we see a port to the original game for Android devices. Overall, we really just don't know if the series will get another title. And to be fair and honest, it isn't likely that another title will come down the pipe if you look at sales, overall popularity, and the current active player base. As the number is this small, it just won't even be worth it to make a new game, at the cost of the company. And just like any company, they are for profit, like it or not. However though, it still is a possibility and only time will tell if another title will come. As far as the possibilities of the immediate future for the Conduit series, it would either die out due to the Wii shutdown and no future titles, or live onward for the Wii U. Hopefully the latter will be the case, but even if it isn't so, here's the Conduit 1 and 2. Because I know for me the series meant much for me and other players I know. And I know a lot of them feel the same way for sure. I'm sure you can think of some others in this boat as well. So, what's the verdict? Overall, not sure, isn't likely, but still is possible. 
As we see some hope in a past announcement, a port that is already out, and some other options that could be a port to the eShop, but even still, it's not likely. But one can hope. Thank you for watching this video. If you wish to watch my other kind of related videos, they're all available on my channel to watch, ready for you. If you missed my latest montage with the game, you can click here to check it out. I promise you, you will enjoy it, especially at the end. It's pretty epic. And links are all in the description as well. So until next time, guys, farewell. Oh, what the? You're here to help.